Now, let me show you the story of another man, another giant of a man. Let's show me the picture first. Let me show them the picture first. This man here, this man here, this man here, remember this place. They remember this place. When you get to heaven, you want to remember this guy. You want to meet this guy when you get to heaven. When you get to heaven, you want to look for this guy. Have you ever heard of Bill, you know, big men of God like Bill, uh, Bill, uh, Billy Graham? This used to be the Billy Graham of Nigeria. Have you ever heard of great men of God like Ora Roberts? This is the kind of guy. Have you ever heard of people like um, uh, Alexander, Alexander Bowie, Bowie? This is the Alexander Bowie of Nigeria. Have you ever heard of A.A. Allen? This is the A.A. Allen of Nigeria. Have you ever heard of people like, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, any kind of healing minister, miracle, or who, Catherine Kuhlman? This is the Catherine Kuhlman of Nigeria. After he died, they started a, a movement in his name. And they used him. He was not even the head of the church at that point. He was just an evangelist. But they elevated him because of the power he worked in. He didn't even strive for it. But they you know, built the church in his name later on. CAC, Christ Apostolic Church. He became the head of it. But let's read about him. Who is he? And how did syncretism come into the church? You know, despite how powerful God used him. Joseph Babalola was born on April 25, 1904 at Odoowa. Odo 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 okay. Odo near Ilofa. Ilofa, in what was known as Ilori province. His parents David and Martha Rotimi had six children between them, of whom Babalola was the first. They were members of the Anglican Church. Babalola began elementary school in Oto Awori. Oto Awori, Oto Awori, a town on Badagri Road in Lagos, while living with his uncle, who was an Anglican catechist, when his uncle was transferred to Ibese. Ibese in a Bado division in 1922 he left school to engage in farming but recom uh, recommended his schooling recommend sorry recommend his schooling in 1924 at the at this time bread had already died at this time bread had already started his own ministry garlic bread he had already finished he was already he was already dead when Babalola was not even born again at the All Saints CMS School, Oshobo. He continued there from Standard 3. When he failed the promotion exam from Standard 4 to 5, he abandoned schooling and got a job as a trainee dispenser at the African Hospital in Oshobo. Then later on, he became a tractor driver and all that. But what, what am I saying is that, you see, he had four great education. So you can't blame this kind of people. What they had was the zeal to know God, to discover God, and he discovered God in a big way. This man, let me tell you now how powerful the man is. Come on, God, go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay, the major draw factor for to those churches and today is that these churches produce manifest results. Though they use a lot of mediums, a carryover from practice practices, but in their own time, I won't blame them too much because they were uneducated men. They were ordinary men who desired to have God. And by their faith, they touched God. God appeared to them and they wrought wonders in the name of God. But today, we don't need to keep on the, 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 the wrong and the fetish practices that were you know, allowed in their ministry. You know, we don't need to continue that. And I'm going to tell you what are the fetish ministry in CAC today and in African church, in Nigerian church in general. But first of all, let me tell you how God used this man mightily. Okay. Many works of miracles were wrought by the Lord through this man, Ayo, Joseph Ayo Babalola. He was endowed, endued with power from on high. He raised the dead. This man was raising the dead. Let's show the photograph again. This man was so powerful in God. He was raising the dead through his prayers. He was so powerful. Okay? 
many hopeless barren women. That's a big topic in Nigeria, barren and the Yoruba land. Of long standing years were made fruitful. Thanks to that man. Many long standing Many long-standing years of pregnancy were wonderfully delivered. Many blind were made to see. The dumb spoke. The lame walked. The deaf were made to hear. Lunatics were delivered. And lepers were cleansed. Many that were born by uncountable kinds of sicknesses, diseases, and infirmities were fully and freely set free in the mighty name of Jesus by this man. Now, let's go to the last history, the history page, the last one I said we should put at the end. Okay. See these incidents, for example. For weeks, where the revival of with him really broke through was a town called Elisha. Now, for weeks, the streets of Elisha were congested with townspeople and visitors, men and women, young and old, rich and poor, Christians and non-Christians, <laughs> the prices of goods and services skyrocketed. Tins, bottles, kegs, and pots became expensive because the people who attended the revivals needed containers for water. You see now, you could begin to sense something. Why water? I will explain to you why water. And why water became a key, a major key of miracle, miracle and healing in Nigeria and through the ministry of this man. So, for water, containers for water prayed over by Baba Lola during the meetings. They thereafter took the water home and used it for drinking bathing or bathing and application to the parts of their bodies just water that were diseased now but why would god allow that to happen why would god use water you remember when we spoke about paganism god will always use the means that people you are ministering to understand that is the level of the people that is where they belong that is you know, you will see that in the Bible, God also used apron, aprons or handkerchief, whatever the sort of thing. Why? He used them among the pagans, among unbelievers. That is what they understood. In paganism, you need an object. Because there was no concept that God is universal. God is uh, what, omnipresent. So when they only need to, they need to see a man that carries power. And when they see a man that carries power, they want to touch him or him to touch them. So when he cannot touch them, they want to him to at least speak something or do something into something so that they could carry with them because they don't have the concept of the omnipresent God that God and they talk less of having the concept of God in them because they were unbelievers. God was not in them. I mean, to them, they didn't know that that God is in them. They did, it was so strange to them. So God will allow the man that they have seen God in to give them His presence because that is what paganism was all about. In paganism, you always have a witch doctor come. And the witch doctor, anytime you come to a witch doctor, a witch doctor cannot just tell you go. A witch doctor will give you something. It will speak to something and give you to go and wear maybe, or to go and drink, or to go and do sacrifice. You have to carry, a witch doctor must do something and give you. So that is where these people are coming from. They are coming from that culture of God has to, you know, you remember that photograph? There's somebody between God and something. So if he has met with God, if he has access to God, God must give him something. God must tell him something to do. So it's coming from that culture where you say, okay, God, I have come talk to God. Though. I have met God. Though. God has said, I should do this thing for you. So they don't believe him as they will believe God. But the downfall of that is that people don't see God because they, think, they still keep on thinking like pagans that they cannot reach God. So they only see him. So he becomes God to them. So that's why in Christianity it's not practice. It could be used while you are evangelizing a foreign culture or a pagan culture or new believers until now you bring them to church and now train them that no, you don't need me. 
the leader is supposed to now remove himself and say, no, see the word of God. He is already in you. The kingdom of God is in you. Even Jesus, when he came, he said, if I do this by the finger of God, the kingdom of God has come to you. He removed himself from him. And now he said, the kingdom of God is in you. Oh, may I go. Even Jesus. Say you, if you ask anything in the name of the Father, you yourself, who are your father, will make you ask. <laughs> Even Jesus removed himself from the something. But so that is why in church, in Christianity, we don't do those things. It was done in the streets of Jerusalem, where there were pagans, there were Jewish pagans who didn't know Jesus. And who didn't know that Jesus was God was in them. They didn't even believe it that God could be in them. The same thing with the oil and things like that. But when people become born again, you should teach them about personal religion with their father. Your father, who is in heaven, knows your need. And he lives in you. And greater is he as it. But in this case, because we are, this man, he was walking among the poor, you know, the, 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 the young, the old, the woman. People were, all of them were paganistic. Nigeria was all in darkness. All of them were pagans. And they could not go to, you, if this man, I got, uh, Baba Lola, we to show him. There is no way for him to prove to them that God is just pray as they go home. People think people feel you have not done anything. They need to take something with them. That is the culture. And God saw into that. God is a God of understanding. But we don't turn that into practice, into an accepted practice or acceptable practice. We don't turn that into. Mm, into the norm. The norm still remains the word of God. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. They that believe in him, he gives power to become sons of God. You shall have to teach them those things in its time. But this is what crusade is going on. So I could understand why God will use that. Go, can you go back? Where is it? So the day after, okay, let's say, Okay, things, tins, bottles, kegs, and pots became expensive because the people who attended the revivals needed containers for water prayed over by Babalola during the meetings. They thereafter took the water home and used it for drinking, bathing, and application to the parts of their body that were sick. The water in the brook near, there was a river in Malaysia. That brook dried up. Because in a meeting, they had up to 40,000 people every night. You know what 40,000 means? That's a town. So they, they, all the 40,000 people descended on the, on, the, <laughs> on the river. The river, they were getting the river, so the water so fast. Some of them were coming with containers to last them for five years or ten years. The water, the river dried up. <laughs> the, in, the, the, the water in the brew near the revival ground was fresh until it became dry. <laughs> this is because God was answering, the, honoring the, power, the prayers of that man. And the water was working. So people, people were coming <laughs> to get the water and for him to pray for, the, for him. <laughs> so until the river became dry. The people had to squeeze water out of the mud. They, they will be praying that rain will come. They will get rain finished, and after the rain finished coming, they will get mud, dirty mud, and squeeze something out of it, the sand out of the something, and squeeze water, and take the water to go and pray for, and drink the water. water. And they were not getting diseases, they were getting healed. This is how much God showed favor. But you could see that that was just exceptional thing. You don't go and be drinking but, uh, mud, mud water now and say somebody has prayed. That would be ignorance. But God did that, all not the people's faith and the, his servants, just to help the people in bondage. Something became dry. The people had to squeeze water out of the mud at the riverbed to get even small quantities of water to use. You see, God will do this kind of thing, especially evangelists when we are ministering to unbelievers. That's why the Bible says that signs, that's like a sign. Sign is for unbelievers. And miracles is for children. Healing is the children's bread. 
So signs and miracles is for those outside. So this kind of miracle will normally happen. Let me even show you. Now we're going to go change the order. Let's go to the lady. Let, let's go to the uh, epidemic where the epidemic was and the lady with the water. Let me now show you where the use of water started in Nigeria. Where the use of water started for healing. No, the present Nigeria. There was this woman, apart from, you now know about Ayo Babalola, right? It's a great man of God. You see the way he has been used. Now, apart from Ayo Babalola, before Ayo Babalola, there was another revival. Ayo Babalola is the leader of CAC. It is out of that, that those miracles and his ministry that CAC was born, Christ Apostolic Church. But, apart from, before Ayo Babalola, uh, after bread, before Babalola, there was another revival. After bread died, another revival started in the West, in Ijebu, Ijebu Ode. And the, one of the people that God used to do this revival was a woman. She was a school teacher. See this woman? We might not be able to recognize her face here because she's so old. This photograph was taken like in 1918. Old. So her name is Sophia Odunami. She is one of the people who started the Aladura movement. If you are from Nigeria, you have you must have heard of Aladura movement, Aladura prayer band, Aladura white garment people. They are Aladura people. Now she was one of the people who started. You see the white garment, it's Aladura. Okay, let's go. So let's. When was the time that God raised up that woman, and why did God into, allow water to become a means of healing in the Nigerian church? Let's read the story for you. From the end of 1918 to mid-1919, Nigeria was ravaged by an influenza epidemic that was an offshoot of the worldwide pandemic. Here in Europe also, they call it the dead, the, what they call it? Dark, dark, mm -hmm. no, dead, no, dark dead or black death, black death, yeah, black death. There was a ravaging in the after the second world war, for, after the first world war, between the, the, the time of the world war, war, it was black death in Europe. It also got to Africa. So around that, this is its influenza epidemic that was offshoot of the worldwide pandemic that began in the closing month of the World War One. You see, about five hundred thousand Nigerians. Can you see half a million Nigerians out of a population of eighteen million? The whole of Nigeria was 18 million this time. And one million of them, almost half a million of them, was, was died in less than six months. Can you imagine this amount of people dying in less than six months? Out of 18 million, that is catastrophic. Everybody was, people were dying by the thousands every day in less than six months. And between 50 to 80% of all Nigerians were stricken by this thing. Out of 80%. The whole country was being wiped out. Do you think God will just stand and wash? That is when everybody started praying. The Babala was couldn't help. The God couldn't help. The Ifa couldn't help. Because they were trying to you know, do divination and you know, do you know, the spiritual healing. But this was epidemic. It's, it, it's, uh, it's, you know, Ifa, it's not the God and the ancestors that will heal it. It is, it is not a spirit. It is disease. Is either you find cure for it, and this was around the time what stopped it in Europe was that the front antibiotic or uh, penicillin or what they call it, penicillin, the front antibiotic, and that is what stopped it in Europe. You know, that is what how God cured it. And then in Europe, also, there were miracles, God, there, there was revival, also. And either God will come and help people, or we will find healing for it or cure for it. The Babala was couldn't help, they were also dying. <laughs> So the whole country was dying. One out of two was dying. If I up to 80% of the whole Nigeria, they were all 18 million. Why do you find the one that is so bad? No, you could have found cleaner something with just Nigeria alone with. You know, we have better have something than Nigeria than this. Anyway, this is the whole Nigeria. Every the whole country was ravaged by this epidemic. So the whole country was dying like crazy. But God decided to have mercy on us. And God intervened. How did God intervene? Let's see the story. So this woman I showed you, let's see the woman again. This lady, Sophia Odunlani, 
Odunlami from my village. It was it's, she's from Ishonyi, Ishonyi in, in Ijebu, oh, there. and I'm from Idomo. They were just neighbors. I didn't know that. I'm just discovering. <laughs> Let go. Odunlami Sophia is associated associated with the beginning of the Aladura movement. You see, in Western Nigeria in the early 20th, 20th century. Sophia Odunlami first became widely known locally in 1918. On, this was the year Bray died. Bray died and God raised up an answer. On, on account of her visionary experience during the influenza uh, epidemic. You know, the whole country was dying. That, that ravaged Southwest Nigeria and the whole of Nigeria when Western medicine failed to hold back the disease or offer any help to those afflicted. No, but not just here in, in Africa, but in Europe also, Western medicine was helpless. The British colonial administration closed down some schools and churches to prevent the, its continual spread. As a result of a dream, you see, as a result of a dream, Joseph B. Shadari, that's another leader of the Aladura movement, name later changed to Eshin, Eshin Singh, are they? Eshin Siade, right? Eshin, Eshin Shiade or Eshin? Anyway, a member of the Diocesan Board and a leading member of St. Saviour's Anglican Church, that church is still there in Ijebodi up to now, started regular prayer meetings to seek divine intervention to halt the epidemic. One of those who joined the prayer meetings was Sophia Odulami, later Mrs. Ajayi, a relative of Shadare, then a young woman in her early 20s who was teaching in an Anglican school in a village of Ishoi, near Ijebode. Okay, go ahead. Sophia Odulami's prophetic revelation in 1918, in which she was told to instruct everybody in the Ijebode area who had been infected by the influenza virus to store the water the rainwater, rainwater from the rain that will fall on a particular day. You see what God, how God has mercy. God gave him a dream that on a particular day, rain, like two weeks ahead, that this day, rain is going to fall. Let everybody, they had enough time to gather you know, their storage, you know, can and stain and pots and to gather water. If they would drink that water, or use that water to wash or to touch the sick place, people will be. That is how influenza stopped in Nigeria. How will you not follow that kind of person after? <laughs> <laughs> but later on, people now began to use water because they have seen how water was used to deliver people. That's how water entered into Nigerian Christianity as a means of healing and deliverance. But you see, we just seem supposed to, it's not supposed to remain and stay in the church. This was among the pagans. All of them were unbelievers, almost. But God was showing mercy and deliverance. But we shouldn't now build a whole altar. That is exactly what happened with Babalola as well. God used something, but you don't build an altar around it. So anyway, uh, that a particular day, and apply the water to the diseased parts of their body. Family placed her in the center of the healing movement in the town. The leaders of the Diamond Society encouraged people to follow her instructions. You see, after she said that and the thing came to pass and people were healed, see what the leaders of, ch of churches everywhere said. They now said people should follow her instructions on divine healing. And so she became a spiritual because she's a girl, was 19 or something, just had a dream, it came to pass. She has the thing with our culture. If you are powerful or you do something, everybody now wants to <laughs> follow you and worship you. That is how she became. So, and next, so in Africa, the problem is that people are now being led by revelations, by you no know, dreams, by instead of but those things could be used by God, but see the standard of faith is the word of God. And personal relationship with God by everybody, not to exalt somebody. So these are all the things that gave birth to syncretism because everybody started honoring her and she was raised up, and Baba Lola also was raised up. That is already syncretism. They are now standing between men and God, and now and then the water again, 
and then the bell ringing, and then it went and went and went and went. Hello, everybody. DSA here. I would like us to spread this word together. Let the gospel of the kingdom conquer the world. We only need you to help us take five simple steps. What are these steps? One, go ahead and like the video, please, if you have not yet done that. Number two, we need you to subscribe to this channel. Have you yet subscribed? Not yet done it? Go do it now. Number three, you need to press and click on that bell. You see the bell there? That will give you notification of every video that we do. Then the next thing you need to do, write your comments. Let's know what you think, good or bad. And then, of course, you have other platforms like Instagram, like Facebook. Share this video on your other platforms. All right? Let's win the world for Christ.